Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. OMG, baby, it's Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers, Justin Fox, Dennis Gielen. Dennis, how are you today? Awesome. Great. How are you, uh, Justin? Awesome. Thank you very much for joining me on the show. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful summer. Uh, well, I don't like saying the date and time because so who knows when this is re recorded, but it was, it's a beautiful summer day today. You're, exactly. you're, in, you're in Toronto too, right? Is Sun it, is shining. I'm, I'm about an hour and a half northeast of Toronto. So Okay. Whereabouts are you? Peterborough? I'm in the city of Kawartha Lakes, close to Peterborough. Kawartha Lakes, so okay, to... up by Lindsay, Peterborough area, right? Exactly, you got it. Perfect, perfect, awesome. Well, I'm glad you're on the show. I'm going to do a quick little uh, quick little intro so everyone knows who you are. Um, so you are a small-town Canadian customer experience and innovation expert. Uh, you're the, count, the founder, sorry, of consulting company Zero In um, and author of the best-selling book, the zero in formula. Uh, you love helping leaders build a brand. Customers love and company, sorry, leaders build a brand customers love and a company people are passionate to work for. Let me- That's a, let that's me, a mouthful. That is about of a mouthful. I, I, I had to go back and read it as I was reading it. But anyways, Dennis, thank you very much for joining this show. Um, where should we start? Yeah, where, wherever. I'm, I'm an open book, pardon the pun. So. Lit, lit, okay, so I, I did see your LinkedIn post. Um, you kind of were, were leading into things. Is there anything maybe you wanted to share with people as kind of, or are we still in waiting mode? Are we still in, in Sure, yeah. Mode? Nope, what, nope, where no are we worries. right now? So with the, with the success of the book, it, it, it uh, reached number one in, in three different countries. Okay. In Canada, in U.S., um, or sorry, UK and uh, Australia, US, it, it hit number two. Okay. Um, I, I've been in contact with quite a few people in um, Latin America. And they're okay, like, oh, awesome. Be great if if the book was available in Spanish. I was going to say, uh, is it translated or not, not yet? It, it has been translated and okay. I'm going through the process now of, of getting it published in Spanish. So uh, soon to be coming is uh, the Zero In Formula Spanish version. Okay, awesome, awesome. So that's cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the zero in formula? What is what is I guess the zero in formula? Sure. Well, I'll take you back a little bit. I, I started my company Zero In about three years ago, and really just wanted to help as many businesses, as many leaders as I could, um, become more customer centric and innovative. Because okay. I believe those are the two main pillars that just have to be there. If you if you look at the most successful businesses long term throughout history, you're going to find that they have those two things in common. They really invest in understanding who their customers are, right? What makes them tick? How do they think? How do they feel? And how do we design the ultimate experience for them? That's the customer centric side. But these companies are also innovative and inventive, right? You don't hear the phrase, oh, that's the way we do it around here right? They're constantly pushing the needle and they have this culture of innovation. So I believe those two things are the foundation of every long-term successful company. I have an extensive background in both of those areas and really just wanted to help as many businesses get there as possible. Now, when I started Zero In, I typically did this through workshops and consulting engagements. Okay. And that was going great until this thing called COVID comes around. Right. Where, yeah, good luck having workshops. Workshops, yeah. Uh, you know, non-existent, right? Yeah. yeah, and I did switch to online webinars, but, you know, uh, okay. pretty soon people were getting fatigued with, oh boy, another online meeting, another Zoom call, another webinar. Right. Um, so that's where I decided, boy, you know what? Um, with, with the help of a few different mentors, um, I realized what I do fits into a nice formula that also fits nicely into a book format. Okay. And if my goal is to help as many businesses and leaders as possible, well, boy, a, a book can, can be sold anywhere in the world. So that was kind of my COVID pivot um, was to take what I do, put it into book format and, and release it. Cool. So, so if you're, if you're working with a, an organization, like what would be the process? Like, how would you 
kind of start that process yeah. to get them to zero in. Like great, you mentioned great. the two, the two components, right? Yeah. What's, great. what's, uh, give us sort of like a walkthrough of how you might, sure. you know, somebody maybe give them a little bit of a, a free, con, you know, consultation right now, if you were sort of to start well, with, with some. No, no problem. So the, the first thing I do is, is I, as I have them do a self-assessment of their own business. Right. And it is free. And in fact, you can find it on the zero and website. Anybody can do it. Okay. So if you go to zero dash in dot CA, um, you'll see under the resources section, there's, there's a tool called the CCI assessment tool. Okay. And it's just 25 questions. You self-assess your business in these okay. different areas, and it's going to come back with a score. And it's going to score you in five different areas of your business that's, that are really saying, are you customer centric? Are you innovative? Do you have some of these things in place? Are they just check marks where you're saying you're doing it? Or are you actually living and breathing this? So that's my first step is, is you tell me how customer centric and innovative you are, give a good, honest uh, assessment of your business. And then we will meet to say, how do we improve in the areas where you yourself say, I, I'm not doing enough there. And that's where then I have all kinds of templates. Again, there's free templates on the zero in website, but I also have, you know, all kinds of courses, workshops, and consulting engagement and material that I would take you through to say, let's beef you up in these areas where you have self-assessed your, your business needs some, needs some work. Okay. So let's, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to get tactical here. Let's say, sure. let's say you're, you're dealing with, with, with me and my business, let's say backers. Yeah. Um, so we're, uh, you know, we're an equity crowdfunding is kind of one term for it. Uh, security token offering, platform, you know, basically allow businesses to sell equity or shares in their business to retail investors. Yep. So we're, our target probably is, you know, is, um, you know, obviously the investors on one side, but, you know, the, the companies or the issuers or the, the entrepreneurs that are looking, you know, struggling usually to, to raise capital. What, 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 how would we, how could you kind of come in and position sort of that, that customer centric um, you combine with innovation, like what would be, yeah. you know, not to put you on the spot. I'm just, I'm sort of just wanted like spitball, like yeah. what would be some ideas that you would, you know, that you would sort of say, Hey, this is maybe something you need to do or, or yeah. what is it that you would like, how would you maybe address yeah. that? Like, let's say, okay. let's sit, let's do a five minute, you know, you and I initial consultation, you know, for zeroing yeah. in what, 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 how would that look? So on the customer centric side, there, there's a few fundamentals and then same thing on the innovation side. So I'll kind of walk you through a few of them. On the customer centric side, it's do you fully understand the journey that your customer goes through, A, not just in your industry or your market, but to land on you and your services specifically? So on one hand, there's a, a customer journey map we could do to kind of map out what does the journey look like for your customers today from pre-sales to sales to onboarding, you know, to uh, customer service and, and so on. What tools do you have in place? Um, where are things going smoothly? Where are they not? And that's your current journey. And then let's take a step back and let's do what I call uh, jobs to be done uh, interviews or assessments. Let's now get in the head of your customer and figure out what is it that they're thinking and they're feeling um, that leads them to want your product or service. Right. And then how do they land on you and how do they get there? And then how do we design your current uh, customer journey to better fit what the customer is actually thinking and feeling and going through? So there's a couple of different things I would do there with a company. Um, we would look at, you know, your your current advertising, your marketing, your web presence, and what does it look like or feel like to be a customer of, of your own product there, and then make all kinds of adjustments and, and tweaks to optimize that experience. On the innovation side, there's a couple um, foundational principles and practices as well. Um, in, in the book and in my online course that goes with it, I actually give five or six different um, foundations, foundational pieces to building a culture of innovation. So one goes with what we just talked about. How well do you truly understand your customers, right? Are you investing in tools and strategies to better understand your customers? If not, the rest of the principles don't matter because if you're not starting with your customer, you're really just having innovation for the sake of innovation. Right. It has to start with empathy and start with your customer. 
But then it gets into, okay, what are our uh, typical assumptions and biases? What are the things that we're bringing to the table when we hear ourselves say, well, that will never work, or we've tried that before, or that's not the way we do it around here. How are we putting some good principles and practices in place to make sure we get past those stumbling blocks? Because a lot of times I work with companies and what they find is a lot of great ideas got thrown out with the bathwater because right. they just have too many, or sometimes I call it experience baggage, where okay. sounds like a great idea, but uh, no, for these reasons, it's too risky or it'll never work, right? So do you, so you feel like, and it's, I just thought of something there like split testing, right? Kind of going out, iterating, testing everything, kind of throwing yep. things out there to see what, like, do you agree with that model? Like, I'm just yes. sort of, yeah. That's, okay. a, that's another one of the, the, the principles that I um, teach and preach. Uh, I'm, I'm a certified agile project manager. Okay. So breaking things down into smaller chunks, piloting, testing, um, it fits in well, again, with the design thinking. If, you, if you're um, familiar with the five-step process of design thinking, which a lot of big, innovative, creative companies use, it's let's brainstorm for ideas. Let's kind of pick the top ones. Now let's pilot and test them because, hey, we just thought of these in a room. Right. We don't really know if they're good until the customer tells us they're good. Right. And the customer doesn't usually tell you with their voice. They tell you with their actions and their reactions. So let's get something small and quick in front of them so we can get some instant feedback. Right. Um, so again, I would work with companies on, well, how do you do that well? How do you put those agile principles and practices into place? How do you do design thinking effectively uh, as a team so that you are innovating and iter iterating appropriately? Right. Interesting. That, uh, yeah, so it's, I mean, I agree with the innovation is, you know, it's kind of like, I, I use the example of the Palm Pilot, right? Sort of, you know, it's kind of that prime example where, you know, people, they came up with this amazing thing that, you know, was separate from the phone, right? That, you know, could book, you know, calendar, do whatever it did. But everyone yeah. was like, I want that on my phone. And it wasn't until Apple came in and said, hey, we're going to give you all these apps that basically can can be on your phone. Now you don't need yeah. two devices, right? And so um, I think that was, that was sort of an example that at least I use in, in sort of it, our, our it, context. It, of it's funny because uh, it's a great example. But if you go back and you research the history of the iPhone, what you'll find is that Steve Jobs himself did not like the idea. Right, okay. It was some of his senior people within Apple that kind of got together and said, wow, we got this great idea. Let's put this all together on a phone. All these apps, you know, your, your calendar, your phone, you know, you can surf the web, you can do all yeah. your, and at first, Steve Jobs was like, whoa, no, we've got the iPod, 20,000 songs in your pocket. Why would we combine that with this? And that's going to get too confusing was kind of his stance. And, and it took, you know, he himself had some assumptions and biases that he had to get past. And it took some piloting and some testing yeah. and some convincing before Apple themselves actually went ahead with, with the iPod. That's interesting. I did, I did not know that. I'll have to look up, look up that uh, because that's, I mean, in, you know, if you look back historically, you know, sort of, I guess, in the, the glossed over, glazed over history of, of that we all kind of live in, you know, I was always under the impression that that was kind of the genius of the iPhone was, yes, the iPod revolutionized music in putting sort of the MP, MP3 player or whatever right, you've got in your pocket. And then the iPhone kind of came along, amalgamated that with a whole bunch of other apps yeah. and created this kind of, uh, centralized, you know, device that you could literally take yeah. with you anywhere. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so well, let's I talk. Think, yeah, I go ahead. Sorry, luckily, sorry just, to, just to harp on that one more yeah. time. Luckily enough, Apple had a leader in Steve Jobs who right. did understand, okay, sometimes I got to get out of my own way. Right. And he understood the power of piloting and testing and really understanding your customer. You take another example of a company that failed to do that and that's Kodak. It was, right. it was actually Kodak that developed the digital camera. Right. Never brought it to market. Right. It was back in the 70s. And I think it was an engineer working there named Steve Sasson who created the very first uh, digital camera. And the leadership at Kodak said, no way, this is too risky. Right. Our customers don't want that. 
uh, we've got the Instamatic. We've got yeah, you know, all customers. the film related stuff. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like there's no market for this, and and yeah, and they shelved it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like it was in Xerox too. Xerox had like the first almost personal computer kind of thing, right? They it's sort yeah. of the same idea, and they went the printer route, and they could have been. I think that I don't know, whatever. Maybe it was the first yeah. touch screen or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah, it's, it's funny how but, like these companies don't pivot or don't they have the technology, but they can't see maybe the use cases mm -hmm. or or are too afraid to maybe cannibalize their own. That's the other well, thing. They're comfortable, right? They're comfortable with that's that's why you need with what that, they've got. Yeah, they've that got, culture right? of innovation yeah. where you yeah. have hey. Can we question our own assumptions and biases? Right. And can we pilot and test this? And the ones that are willing to do that, and Steve Jobs eventually was, are the ones that are revolutionizing. Right. And the ones that, you know, is some companies, the higher up the food chain you go, you, I, I like to call it the hierarchy of no, because right. there's more risk on that leader's shoulders, the higher up, so the more risk averse they tend to be. Right. So let's build that culture of innovation where we'll say, well, let's try it. Let's try it small scale. Let's do a test. Let's do a pilot. And let's objectively look at what is that telling us? Is there a market for that? If we tweak it here, if we do that, is there a future in this? But if you just say no outright, boy, you could be missing on some really amazing ideas. Yeah, it's, uh, and that's, and that's, yeah, I mean, you've hit sort of the, the nail on the head. I mean, there's that whole, the establishment, you know, I, they talk about the dinosaurs, if the dinosaurs knew they were going to extinct, they would have done something, right? Or sort of like, sure. right? There's there's all these, um, you know. If only they, we all had a crystal ball, right? Right, right. And and so, but it's all often very hard to, to you know, steer a massive, you know, entity and, and redirect, right? Especially when the going is good and, and things seem like, you know, it, it's, it's a never ending, you know, pot of money or, or pot of gold, right? Yeah. And so it can be difficult. So that's why a lot of, young early stage startups small teams innovators are able to kind of like do those massive pivots i'm going to ask i just let into my own question how would you encourage or how do you how do you how does a company like that how can they like what can they implement or what are maybe some some core beliefs or, or, or guidelines or values or whatever it is, can they have that they can implement so that they, because I mean, it's in, inevitable, I think for large organizations, like you said, there's human nature of, of, you know, like, you know, to being risk averse and just kind of following with what they're going, what can a company, especially larger companies or more established companies, what can they do? Because obviously, you know, you're starting out, you're, you're ready to kind of throw you know shit against the wall and kind of hope something sticks but larger more established companies what what can they do or what would you recommend yeah. um, that they yeah. do to kind of to kind of embrace or or foster uh innovation or change yeah, yeah. Well, you, long you, you question it, sorry you, no it's okay you, you, you this is exactly what goes on right? right almost every successful company when they started out were innovative Right, right. Of course. In yeah. order to be successful, you had to be a little bit different. Um, you had to think on your feet. You had to be able to pivot, and you had that creative and entrepreneurial, innovative mindset. Right. Uh, what tends to happen over time is a lot of companies start to, um, instead of focusing out on their customers and how do we serve them better and how do we find new creative, innovative ways to to serve them, they start to now focus internally. Okay, right. we've got it. We've made it. How do we get more efficient? Right. How do we improve Reduce our numbers? Costs. Yeah, yeah. Right. And those are all good processes things. and and you know everything, right? Right. But yeah. but the what the problem is they start trading the one for the other. Right. Instead of being outward focused and creative and innovative, we start to be more inward focused and this is how we do it. These are our processes. This is what we're focusing on next quarter. Um, it, it's instead of, whereas those things need to complement. So when I'm working with a company and, and if, if it's become an instead of problem, how do we get back to that? Right. How do we inject that? And really, like you, you mentioned, it has to be some core beliefs, almost like a manifesto that has to be built back into your culture. And those are those um, innovation um, principles and practices that I preach in the Zero In Formula book and in the course 
And it's really, let's start embed these back into our, our culture again, into our habits, into our meetings, and let's make this the almost the way we do things. Right. I, I was, I, as you were speaking there, I was thinking, um, it, it's Apple, right? The think differently was sort yeah. of the mantra, right? So you're sort yeah. of, you know, continue, you need to continue that thinking differently mantra, yeah. right? So that you don't get stuck in how do we, how do we improve this existing process, you know, so that we can reduce costs or increase profits or, you know, whatever the, the metric that you're trying to achieve yeah. and rather look at that, you know, potentially completely different alternatives and paths, right? Because yeah. I read, I actually watched, watched, I don't know, consume media so many different ways, I either read or watched something, but the average company, and my, I'm terrible with stats, but you'll get the gist. The average yeah. company spent something like 72 years on the S&P 500, like previously. Yeah. Now the average company spends 18 years mm. and there's thought that it will go down over the next, you know, three to five years to maybe 12 years. And yeah. before you know it, you know, that turnover will be very rapid, right? So, yeah. you know, what what was, you know, and that's kind of talks to the, um, you know, the acceleration of change, right? Change is becoming more and more. It's always been inevitable, but now it's becoming more and more inevitable. And it's only the companies that, that can adapt or adopt that to that change uh, that will be still in that, you know, because arguably those are the top companies that are in that S&P 500. Yeah. To stay at the top, you're going to need to be able to adapt, right? So yeah. what, what, are, what are maybe, I mean, I like getting tactical. Like what are, as a, as a CEO, as a manager, as a, you know, executive, senior executive on a board, whoever it is, right? Like a leader in a organization, you know, what are some things that you can, as, as you know, an individual do to kind of foster that? I mean, I know you talked about, you know, from a company wide, but like, what are some things that maybe individuals can do to kind of maintain that? So we don't have that fear of, like you said, mm -hmm. the higher you go up, the more, the more, e the, I guess, no becomes easier to say, or yeah. almost becomes a, you know, defense mechanism, right? Yeah. What are, what are some things that individuals can do to kind of maintain that, especially as leaders, right? I'm thinking more leaders yeah. of, of an organization. So uh, from a leader, I'm going I'm to give you two different ways to look okay. at it. Yeah. From a leader's perspective, one of the things that we always do is we try to instill good metrics, good KPIs or OKRs uh, are the buzz nowadays, but a lot of those are performance-based, right? Sales numbers, uh, efficiency right. numbers, you know, metrics that we can kind of measure around how did we do last quarter and how are we going to improve that next quarter? Well, let's put some very intentional metrics or goals or KPIs or OKRs in there around innovation. How, uh, how many new pilots are we trying? How are we, how are we doing with testing those pilots, right? You can, right. you can, if all of your goals and metrics are just based around performance numbers, where's the incentive for people to be innovative? Right. Build that into their goals, build that into your metrics so that you are creating this culture of innovation. Now, on the individual side, uh, a lot of it has to do uh, innovation with getting inside your comfort zone. Right. You want to get away from that risk aversion, get away from that hierarchy of no. Start with yourself. Intentionally get yourself outside your comfort zone. Get into a routine of doing that. One of the simplest things that resonates with everybody when I explain this to them is remember back when we all used to drive to work, right? Before right. work from home, right? Just about everybody finds their route to work, right? This is how I drive to work, right? Maybe it took you five or six, seven different times, but this is my route. And then you get to the parking lot and guess what? Even if there's not assigned parking, Oh, that's my spot, that's your spot. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We right. all have these built-in comfort zones that we that we create. And it goes throughout your entire day. This is my routine. This is where I do it. This is how I do that. This is how I do this. Well, guess what? Your brain starts to look for that throughout everything you do. Right. So recognize that. You want to start building a, a culture and a habit and, and a personal um, innovation mindset intentionally drive a different route to work intentionally right. 
park in a different spot, intentionally get your coffee from somewhere else, intentionally um, switch up the way you're uh, doing meetings, intentionally you know, read a book you wouldn't normally read, watch a movie you wouldn't normally, go somewhere different on vacation and start to, and now instead of your brain creating this comfort zone mindset, it starts to create this getting out of your comfort zone mindset. And this, it starts to foster different ways of thinking, being open to new opportunities. Right. And if, if a leader can encourage their team members to do the same thing, well, now you're getting this cultural wide and it's um, not necessarily easy to do. Yeah. But it sounds simple, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's definitely sort of, I mean, you hear that a lot, getting out of your kind of your comfort zone or, or you know, doing things that are uncomfortable um, and, and yeah, it's interesting you talk about, you know, getting in routines or a kind of, you know, unassigned parking, but everyone sort of parks in yeah, the same our brains spot, are right? Lazy, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Well, Dennis, I, I, where, where can everyone find you? I guess, where can they, they find you? You said um, zone dash in dot CA, right? Is zero, zero dash in dot CA. Zero, zero, my mistake. Yeah. Zero. Yes, Z E R O dash in dot C A or yes. uh, probably my the social channel that I'm most active on would be LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. So if you okay. look me up, Dennis Geelan on LinkedIn, uh, happy to connect and um, perfect. Or they can come up to Cortha Lakes and hang out up there. There you go. Do you have any? Do you have any land up there? Yeah, it's beautiful up there. Yeah, are you on? A, are you in? I'm not on water or anything. No. Actually, my, my wife and I are in the process of moving. We are going to Peterborough. Okay. In, um, in the next few months, so. That's cool. So Cortha Lakes is technically Lindsay, right? Or Lindsay's a part Lindsay of it, right? Lindsay and sort of a bunch of the uh, changed, smaller right? towns around amalgamated. So yeah, okay, uh, yeah, but, yeah, that's but what I thought. I'm in Lindsay, Ontario right now. Yeah. Okay, cool, awesome. So they can find you, obviously, Dennis Gielen, um, and uh, on your website, right? Uh, yep. And then they can get you also the book. The book is uh, the book is zero in the zero in formula, right? So zero dash in dot ca yeah. and the zero in formula and so is that on what like amazon or bookstores or wherever yeah a few select bookstores but mostly through amazon you can find links to it on the zero in website and then the online course that dives deeper into the book is also on the zero in website um, starting to get quite a few different uh, leaders around the world taking the course and you'll see okay, some testimonials cool. there so lots of great feedback social media just linkedin do you do any like facebook I Twitter. do Facebook, I do Twitter, I do Instagram, yeah. but Instagram. Uh, I find for what I do, yeah. LinkedIn is more the appropriate, the appropriate spot for that. No TikTok? Not really big into not, TikTok. Not yet? So. No. <laughs> no. Maybe one day. I ask just, everyone, I ask most yeah. people in the audience, I'm like, TikTok? Not many people that are on here uh, on the show. I think I've done close to 110 or 50, 115 episodes over the past year. And uh, I think there's maybe been a handful one or two maybe three people that have have had or embraced tiktok yeah. so it's interesting different de different you know what I, I i enjoy yeah. watching some of the creative stuff that comes yeah, out yeah. there but for me an author and a consultant i'm, I'm still trying to figure out well, what, what would be the appropriate thing for it, me it to could put be fun on i i think i mean yeah. I'm, I'm sort of debating for like even taking this whatever you call it um you know and for backers and trying to do maybe some just little you know clips like maybe just something you said throw it up or something we've you know said and just throw it up and see what people you know if it resonates um yeah. i don't know I, I i'm all about so for me like you talk about innovation and ideas i agree i i aspire to like always be kind of 10 steps ahead um you know not sort of resting in our laurels but i think there's a huge opportunity and not to sell tiktok but huge opportunity to like get a mass influence with zero dollars yeah like you can get a few thousand tens of thousands of followers in you know in a short period of time which i've heard analogies to you know the early days of youtube and the early days of of instagram and and how yeah. you know and even you know and even more so so it might be interesting to look into if, if uh iterate I, I said to someone else on here if you're interested i'd love to have you part of our broader TikTok group and we can do some, you know, maybe there some you know. interesting little uh, test, 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 right? collabs, right? Collaborations, yeah. right? Yeah. Test, iterate, we'll throw something out there and say, hey, let's see if that works. Let's see if that works and, and see where it can go. So yeah. if you're interested, I, you know, let's connect and see if maybe we do a, 
a little TikTok collaboration. See how Sounds it goes. Good. Cool. Awesome. Dennis, again, thank you very much for joining me. Everyone else, this is One Take, powered by backers, Justin Fox, Dennis Geelan. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you guys again very soon. Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. OMG, baby.